It's no secret that I was not the biggest fan of KSP2 when it released. I was one of only a handful that had the guts to say the state of the game was completely unacceptable when the embargo lifted, and I got a lot of backlash for that from people that hadn't even been able to play the game yet. The hype train was off the rails, and I think many didn't want to believe that such a highly anticipated follow-up to a beloved game was in as bad a state as I said, particularly with most other YouTubers not wanting to go even half as far as calling it unplayable. But the opinion of the wider community pretty rapidly reached the same conclusion, and the player numbers speak for themselves. <gasps> Everyone expects early access games to be content light and have a few bugs, but the model is not an excuse to release fundamentally broken games, particularly not at full price. I've seen some truly impressive mental gymnastics to defend the state of the game, such as saying you can't criticise an early access game, even though that's the entire point of early access, or comparing it to how KSP1 launched. KSP1 being an indie game initially made by one guy that I bought for £4. The comparisons were all just apples and oranges, plus an ultra high pressure canister of copium. But I have a lot of respect for a studio that can admit they messed up. That instead of making empty promises or apologies, just put their heads down and get the game into the state that it should have launched in. So did for science KSP2's first major update manage it? Yes! Yes! Yeah! Until today, I hadn't touched KSP2 since release. Unlike some of my friends who put their sanity aside to make content on it regardless, I didn't want to make myself hate the game. In my release video, I never said I didn't have faith in the development team or that I didn't still believe it could become all they promised it would be. My advice was just that the game wasn't worth the asking price and simply to wait until it was. And I'm glad I did exactly that. If the new exploration mode was my first experience of the game back in February, I would have fallen in love with it. With the most glaring game-breaking bugs fixed, just enough performance improvements made and a progression mode added, everything finally clicks the same way the original did that first time I played it over a decade ago. You build a rocket, launch a mission, gain science, unlock new parts, then take them out for a spin with an even bigger rocket. As Tom Vanita so eloquently put it, you can build the big the big rocket of your dreams and actually there's a point to it. But it's a loop that KSP2 hasn't just improved over the original, but dare I say it, perfected. There just aren't any interruptions to enjoying the game. Don't know how to do something? There's an entire facility dedicated to teaching newcomers how to play. No tabbing out to watch Scott Manley required. Ooh. Collecting science? No more scrambling to find that one thermometer you buried inside a service bay. Just push one button when it flashes. Don't know which technology to unlock? They're actually laid out in a logical pattern now, with tiers making it clear what you need to achieve certain milestones. With no funds to speak of or size constraints placed on your craft, the only limit is your creativity. There's no more grinding out endless satellite contracts to afford the parts you need, but if you aren't quite confident your ability to reach the next major milestone, you still have the option of completing simpler side objectives to unlock a bit of extra tech or build your confidence. Although I'm still not a huge fan of the parts manager, I think the rest of the UI changes are great. With per stage performance information finally added in, it's possible to plow out an entire mission from the VAB, and it's hard to overstate just how satisfying the incredible sound design makes flying that mission. From the awe-inspiring biome-specific ambience and adaptive music, to the bleeps, bloops and call-outs from Mission Control as you plan a manoeuvre. I like them. They've got they've got dealy bobs on them and and bit boops. If you're an experienced player like me and the first missions seem a bit pedestrian for you, you can complete them one after the other on a single flight. No new vessel required for each and every major contract anymore, plus no long loading screen to return to the space center, then into mission control, then back out again. You just jump straight into mission control to accept the next mission, then back to flying it in a matter of seconds. I'm sure seeing how many milestones you can complete in your first launch is going to become the ultimate community challenge. Carnassa said he was going to land on Tyler. Low. Go on and do it then, you coward. But not only does that core gameplay loop keep you hooked, there are even seeds of a storyline planted to grab your interest. Now, I haven't been able to get very far yet, and I don't want to spoil it, but I already can't wait to find out more. I'm not going to start reading change logs and comparing frame rates. Others have doubtless done a better job of that than I could, and the only question I'm interested in answering in this video, and the only box KSP2 Early Access had to tick for me, is whether it's fun to play. And it is my absolute pleasure to say that with the For Science update, yes, it is. That one-of-a-kind Kerbal Magic has been recaptured. 
I still encountered a few bugs even in my early missions, but they were all small things you would expect to slip through QA for an early access release. And it's an important caveat that I've been playing an earlier build than the one just released. There's a long way to go with performance improvements, but at least it's possible to play the game at reasonable frame rates now, even if it still takes some beefy hardware. I made a point of not using a single strut on any of my craft and can confirm that the new joint system is working as intended, but I'm still keen to see a more sustainable long-term solution implemented. KSP's obsession with simulating every single joint has never made sense to me. I honestly considered like giving Nate a pack of Viagra during the interview I did with him next week. <laughs> Why tank the game's performance just that you can at best see a part flex slightly before reverting to the VAB and adding a strut, or at worst have your rocket behave like inflatable arm flailing tube man. The first thing any reasonably experienced KSP1 player does before launching a craft is auto strut the entire thing. Nobody enjoys joint flexing, and I can't be the only person that thought the devs talking about simulating craft as one rigid body as if it's a cardinal sin was really weird. Even treating each stack of similar radius parts as rigid bodies would go a long way towards making a scalable physics system that won't slow to a crawl when we end up building the kind of monsters showcased in the game's announcement trailer, and in my KSP1 series Beyond Kerbal, plug plug. But these are all the kind of things that I can easily forgive in early access, particularly with the developers' increased transparency and confirmation that long-term solutions to these issues are all in the works. KSP2 has a long way to go, but now we can actually enjoy playing it in the meantime. The team's commitment to no future updates being save file breaking really has to be applauded in that respect. The space program's players start today could end up sending Kerbals to other star systems, and that's just awesome. Yes, Intercept messed up releasing KSP2 in the state they did, and if you're determined to hate the game forever because of that, then feel free. But in my eyes, this update has righted the ship. We know the game is fully funded, and I have faith it'll become everything it was promised to be. I hope they take their time with it, don't crunch their team, and release future updates when they're ready, being sure not to reintroduce any bugs or take steps backwards in terms of performance. As for whether it's worth the asking price, I'll have to leave that up to you. I'd say this update puts KSP2 on par with the stock original game in terms of content, but I plan to continue playing that modded for the foreseeable future. All Kerbal Kind is returning on the 14th of January, you can stop asking. If you're yet to purchase and you're still on the fence though, I'd recommend waiting until the new update has had a lot more time put into it and see what the community consensus is. You don't save anything by buying the game early, it's full price, so if you still don't think it has enough value then feel free to hold off for now. Thanks for watching Penguinauts, I'm the Video Penguin and I'm taking a break over Christmas so I'll see you in the new year. SCIENCE! A massive thank you to my patrons and donators for their generous support and an extra special thank you to the amazing steak, Dakota Clark, Olaf Hammerhand, Madsor, Peter Lushtinets, Simone67, Lady Lagzalot, Scott Milligan, Jesse Smith, NX74656, Jordan Millwood, Frosty Moon, Luna Nicole the Fox, and Mr. Bluestar.